Yeah, you were very, very instrumental just recently talking about um, what Macklemore did by by bringing Grandmaster Kaz and, and Melly Mel and Kumo D and doing a record, not only doing a record with them, but doing a video with them and actually doing a performance at the MTV VMAs and brought out, you know, uh, those guys. Why were you so vocal about that? Um, <laughs> um, I, well, when, for, for one, because I put it together. Right. Um, uh, one of Mac Lamoille's managers was my neighbor back in the 90s. Okay. And he called me and was like, um, he calls him Ben. He don't call him Mac Lamoille. He was like, yo, Ben just did this song, and it has like one of those like Rapper's Delight um, freedom type of ho um, hooks on it. Um, and we were thinking about getting some of the pioneers to actually do the hook. You think they would be willing to work with him? Mm. And I'm like, sure, I don't see why not. And he was like, well, who would you suggest? So I, you know, I went with you know the top three from that era. Right. Melly Mel, Grandmaster Kaz, and Kumo D. Right. You know, those were the first top three MCs. Right. So um, I reached out to them, and they all said they were with it, and connected them with um Macklemore's manager, and it happened. You know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that, I mean, there's an inside story to that mm -hmm. as far as what Mac Lamore did for them to pay homage. I'm not gonna, you know, put them dudes business all out, but I mean, I think it's a beautiful thing that he, what he did besides mm -hmm. the song, because right. he did a lot more, you know what I'm saying, you know, for them brothers besides the song. And I, and like, I really respect that man for what he did. And then also, you know, I was just sitting there like, you know, saying to myself afterwards, like, Damn, we never did this. Right. You know what I'm saying? We never reached out to Mel. We never reached out to um Kaz, Busy B. You know, none of the forefathers that did it before us. Right. You know, we never did that. I'm like, damn, he making me feel bad. You know right. what I mean? You know, but I mean, it's like for him to do that because someone as young as Macklemore, I would assume his old school is Biggie and Pac. Right. You know? where he may have heard of a Big Daddy Kane or a Rakim before, like may have heard the name, but not familiar with the music, his old school I would think would be Biggie and Pop. But this dude went past my my era to the beginning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, I thought that that was a beautiful move for hip hop to reintroduce the forefathers of the game to this younger generation because that's who he appealed to. Absolutely. He don't appeal to my era. He don't appeal to the Biggie and Nas era. He appealed to this young generation of today. So to introduce a Melly Mel, Grandmaster Kaz, and Kumo D to this era, that's a powerful thing in hip hop to me. Yeah, it is, absolutely. And it inspired one of my uh, greatest rants that I've ever had on Backspin when I saw you put that up on Instagram because I just think it's a shame that I could sit down with a young MC and they tell me what Kane inspired me or Nas inspired me or or I was inspired by a Tribe Called Quest or I was inspired by Rakim. You know, you got ASAP Rocky who mother named him after Rakim. Mm. His real name is Rakim. Oh, wow. Because of Rakim, his sister name is Erica B. Because of Eric B. Wow. Now, yeah, yes, when, yes, when, yes. when you come when you come up and you get really, really popular, wouldn't it make sense for us? It shouldn't have took a white dude like Macklemore to reach back to the pioneers. ASAP Rocky has no reason why there's not a record with him and Rakim. Right. That should have happened, and that's how I feel. And I and I went on a serious rant about it that I feel like hip hop, we're the only genre of music where it's almost like the young want to eat the old and want them to disappear. You know, and in rock and roll, it doesn't happen. Eric Clapton will come out and say, well, ladies and gentlemen, here's the man that inspired me, and, and God rest his soul, he'd bring B.B. King out. Yeah. Immediately. Exactly. In, you in know? a heartbeat. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, in rock and roll, um, Madonna is a legendary pop artist. In rock and roll, um, the Rolling Stones are legendary rock artists. Right. In the blues, B.B. King was a blues legend. Right. In hip-hop, I'm an old school rapper. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, it's like, you know, the mentality we have and the way that we, um, you know, um, educate the youth about hip hop, like that's part of the problem. Yeah. Like, I mean, like when you home, how often do you hear this in the, in the course of the day? Back in the days, 2012. Yeah. 
2012? How the hell is three years ago back in the days? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, three years they start making you an old school artist. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely.